Hey, I'm back again to do another reaction to a geography video from the Geography Now uh, channel. Um, going through South American countries, first of all. I've done quite a few. Um, I'm going on to Colombia now. So let's find some stuff out about Colombia. Um, what do I know about Colombia first? This is the uh, the bit where I... What is the capital? Oh, the capital of Colombia is... Um, oh, don't, don't tell me. Oh, Bogota. Bogota, I think, is the capital of Colombia. Um, and what, oh, then, <laughs> the only thing I can think about when I think about Colombia is is drugs, lots of drugs, uh, cocaine. Co is it the cocaine capital of the world, or is I don't know? Lots of smuggling over to America from Colombia. Um, sure, there must be more stuff than than that. Um, I've got a Colombian mate. Um, but uh, he hasn't told me anything about Colombia. <laughs> it's not like we sit and talk about Colombia and I think. But uh, yeah, that's, that didn't really help, does it? That's not really uh, helping me. But um, I think, yeah, I think, I don't know. I wonder if it's a bit like Brazil. Um, I think it has like some favelas maybe, some slum areas. Um, I'm not sure. I just, I picture it as like maybe, I don't know, I'm not really a traveller, but I think of it as a sort of dangerous place to visit. <laughs> that's what I would imagine anyway. Uh, there's probably some, some rough areas there. But I suppose that's, that's true of every bloody country in the world, isn't it? But um, let's just crack on with the video, because I can't think of anything else about Colombia that I know. Uh, I don't know anything about Colombia. What's who's on the right? So it borders of Chile and Bolivia, I bet. Um... I just watched the Chile video, so um, and I'm guessing that Argentina is below it, and Brazil must be beside it as well. I would have thought. Um, I think it's on the left-hand side of the uh, of the South American continent as well. Let's just crack on. Thank you. Okay. Hello, Diego. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Isn't there a because there's a Columbia I think in America in North America I think it's uh, like a I think there's not a city called Columbia or a District of Columbia something like that. no DC is that not District of Columbia um, it's a different spelling yeah so yeah there is another word place name Columbia don't mix it up it's Columbia 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 but yeah let's check out the flag. Okay. The flag is pretty simple. It's just three colors, yellow, blue, and red. The yellow takes up half of the entire flag, and the blue and red take up a quarter each at the bottom. The yellow stands for the gold found in the country. The Ooh. blue stands for the shores and the rivers, as well as the sky. And the red stands for... Yep. Now, keep in mind, Colombia, Venezuela, and Ecuador all kind of have followed the same general color scheme in their oh, flag, yeah. partially because they all have a unique relationship that we will discuss later. But first, <laughs> one thing you have to know about Colombia is that it has always kind of historically dominated the northern regions of South America and has played a huge, powerful role on the Latin American stage. Colombia is located on the top of the South American continent, bordered by five other countries, connected to and bisected by Panama in the northwest, making Ooh, well, no, let's have a look. So that's what I was completely wrong with where I thought the uh, the borders of it were. So Venezuela, Brazil, Peru, and Ecuador. So none of the countries that I mentioned. I'm sure I just read what's in the Chile video that they had good um, um, relations with Chile. So I thought they was on the border of it. And I think I said Bolivia as well. So yeah, no, absolutely incorrect. Didn't get a single one of the countries correct. <laughs> Oops, never mind. So it's right up the top then, right up the top there. Okay. Let's carry on with that then. I'm not going to remember that in the future, I wouldn't have thought. But, you know, for this, for the next five minutes, I'm going to remember this fact. Coasts on both the Pacific and Atlantic Ocean. The country has 32 departments and one capital district for the capital city, Bogota. Uh, Diego, did I pronounce that right? Bogota? Bogota? Bogota. 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 Uh, which is also treated as a department. The I got it right. The capital Bogota is also the capital of the Cundinamarca department, but technically not actually part of it. So the citizens of Bogota can vote for the mayor of the city, but not the governor of Cundinamarca, even though the governor's office is also in Bogota. Oh, Colombia! Colombia also has a weird administrative subdivision in which four other cities are also kind of considered districts. They are Barranquilla, Cartagena, Santa Marta, and Buenaventura. Okay, Diego, did I pronounce those correctly? 
Alright, one thing you have to understand <laughs> is that the vast majority of people in the country live in the upper highlands and coasts of the country. And you thought China was disproportionate. Colombia is pretty intense too. Only 3% of the population lives in the dense forests of the south and eastern jungles, even though it makes up 54% wow. of the country's land mass. Many areas to this day are inaccessible and unexplored or simply just kind of closed off to tourists because of the small guerrilla groups that still kind of occupy certain areas. The country spans all the way from... Point oh yeah, keep away from the guerrillas. Definitely keep away from the guerrillas. Uh, they won't necessarily greet you friendly. So yeah, best to stick away. Yeah, they've had civil wars and stuff, haven't they? They must have done if they've got guerrillas hiding out in the blinking forests. Uh, and the swamps or whatever. So 54% of the country only contains 3% of the people. So everyone is up in the other 46%. I suppose that makes a lot of sense. There's lots of, uh, you know, uninhabitable areas or areas just uh, too hard to reclaim from nature. Um, and it's good to, you've got to keep, nature's got to have its place. So it's good that they're not like encroaching too much. But then you look at Brazil cutting down the rainforest all the time. That's not good. I'd much rather people... You know, humans were left these areas unspoiled. Punta Ginas from the Caribbean, which is kind of close to the Gulf of Venezuela, and all the way to the south of the town of Lucicia and the border of Peru in the Amazonas department, which, by the way, has this cool-looking flag. Now let's go offshore. Altogether, Colombia has over 40 islands, keys, and archipelagos along the Caribbean and Pacific coast. Some of the most notable ones being the Rosario Archipelago with pristine coral reefs. Nice. Island that used to be a high-security prison. Now Ooh. a lot of countries put high-security prisons on islands. You're going to kind of see how serious that is going on. Then there's also the San Andres, Providencia, and Catalina Archipelago, which is the only place in Colombia where English is the official language. Oh. That's something to do with the English Puritans moving there because they thought Massachusetts was too cold and something with the pirates and wars, separatists, yada, 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 now it's a house. I need to look that place up and see if there's a see if there's a video just about that island. I've forgotten in fact what the island was called. Now, what did he say the island was called? It, was, it goes so quick sometimes. It's like you don't take it all in. But uh, Gorgona Island was a prison island. That's interesting. And that that one with the um, the, the coral reefs, whatever it was, that was a beautiful looking bit of uh, bit of scenery, wasn't it? Can't forget the San Bernardo Archipelago with Santa Cruz del Islote, regarded as the most densely populated island in the world. What People the hell? Go through each other's living rooms just to get to other places. That's crazy. I need to go and look at that again in close up. Hold on. Of course, you can't forget the San Bernardo Archipelago with Santa Cruz del Islote, regarded as the most densely populated what? island in the world. People literally have to go through each other's living rooms just to get to other places on the island. Now, here's the thing. There's a few insane people in this world that actually have the time, energy, and money to go across this thing called the Pan American Highway, in which they attempt to go all the way from Alaska to Argentina or the other way around. Right around the halfway point, you hit the biggest roadblock, the Darien Gap. Right on the border between Colombia and Panama, there's a thick, dense jungle and swampland with virtually no roads connecting the two countries at about 160 kilometers or 100 miles long. This is the missing link in the Pan America Highway, and in order to get to Colombia from Panama, you will pretty much either have to fly or take a ferry. The reason why there's no road is partially to do with the people going, oh no, let's like protect the rainforest and stuff, and like it could really mess up things with drug trafficking, and also there's just tribal people living there. But the biggest reason why is because it pretty much just costs too much. Okay, now let's have some real fun and see what's inside. Yeah. That makes sense. It costs too much, but also, you know, let people, if there's people living there, don't mess around with their blinking environment. Let them live in peace, for God's sake. People can always blink in, like, let's say, you can take a plane or whatever if they want to really travel the whole distance of that extremely long road that I've never heard of before and I've already forgotten what the name of it was. But that looks like a bloody journey and a half. <laughs> if I was adventurous and uh, had lots of money, that's, you know, I, would, I wouldn't mind doing that maybe. But I'm not adventurous and I haven't got lots of money, so I won't be doing that. But uh, what else was he saying there? Um,. I completely forgot what he was saying now. Sorry, there was something else I wanted to talk about, and I've completely forgotten what it was. This is the thing. I, I try not to. I sort of I was trying not to stop it too quickly because, like, I, I sort of jump in too quick, too many, too many times. But then I like forget what it was I was going to go back and talk about. It got that, that that massively overbuilt island. What is that all about? What is Earth? Is the point of everybody living quite so close together as like that? When there's all these other islands they could probably move to. I mean, that's that's just kind of weird. But anyway, let's carry on with the rest of this video. Colombia is recognized as a mega diverse country. In terms of biodiversity, it's only second in the world after Brazil, and about 10% of the entire world's biodiversity can be found here. The wow. Reason why is partially because Colombia, like the Cameroon episode that we studied a few episodes ago, check it out, comprises an array of dramatically contrasting landscapes all over the entire country. Generally speaking, the country is divided into five different ecoregions the Caribbean, the Andes, the Pacific, the Orinoco, and the Amazon. The oh. Andes region is home to the highlands that the majority of the population and urban centers can be found in. With snow-capped peaks and volcanoes. Remember, this place is kind of still technically a ring of fire. You can find the tallest... 
Volcanoes, you don't need those, thank you very much. Wow, that's very diverse. Five different regions. Uh, I've forgotten them already. You got the Atlantic, was it? You got the Orinoco. Uh, you got the Andes. Uh, I forgot what the other ones were. But uh, yeah, it's very diverse. Orinoco. Orinoco is like um, right. There used to be a TV program. Right? There used to be a TV program, a kids' TV program, where these little furry creatures lived in burrows called Wombles. Like they were like puppets. They were called Wombles, and one of them was called Orinoco. And I kind of knew it was a place name, but I kind of wasn't too sure where, what it was from. But Orinoco is from it's from Colombia. I know that now. But uh, these are big trees. Wow. By the way, Colombia is the third largest producer of coffee in the world, right after Brazil and surprisingly Vietnam. Wow, okay. Vietnam, you beat Colombia? Dang. I should have thought about coffee, actually. I'm not a massive coffee drinker, but yeah, you do hear about Colombia being connected to coffee. And actually, when was did, I did, I, I'm going back on now to Chile. Uh, I actually just re reacted to the Chile video a little while ago. I thought they, they had good wines in Chile, but I don't know what I'm talking about now. We're talking about Colombia. But let's carry on. I've gone off tangent. Dang. Okay. The largest mineral and gem mines with over 140 documented sites. Colombia is the world's largest producer of emeralds, providing about 25 to 90 percent of the entire world's market. The Caribbean region acts as kind of like a drainage basin for Colombia's principal river, the Magdalena, that empties into the Caribbean from the Andes at the point of Barranquilla. This low-lying, humid tropic zone with amazing beaches was actually the first place settled by Europeans in Colombia, and is known for having one of the only two desert zones in all of Colombia, the Guajira Desert. You can also find the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta Mountains. Whew. Which has the world's largest coastal mountain and Colombia's highest peak, Mount Cristobal Colon, although Mount Simon Bolivar is almost completely identical in height. The Pacific is okay. noted for being the rainiest area in all of Colombia with an average Pacific. of 400 centimeters of precipitation year round. This rain supports many rivers that flow through the country and irrigate the dense jungles that reach the coast. The Orinoco region, named after the Orinoco River Basin, is kind of like the farm and ranch lands of Colombia. Sparsely right. populated, this area is on the other side of the Andes and is generally flatter and suitable for crop and livestock production. This area is also rich in oil and home to the famous newly discovered Caño Cristales River, also known as the River of Five Colors, some say seven, or the Liquid Rainbow River. Okay. The world's most beautiful river thanks to the various rock sediments and plant life that adorn the crystal clear waters that flow through. This wow. That's interesting. I've never heard of that. Recently discovered, did they say? So they didn't know it was there previously. It must be such a huge area then that they've only just come across it. And like, it's quite interesting. Seven colours from different like algae and plant life and rock formations, minerals, was it? And was it 90% of the world's emeralds from Colombia? Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> you know, you don't think about these things. Do you? I don't know if I've ever owned an emerald in my life, but uh, so really, the Wizard of Oz should have lived in uh, in Colombia. Then the the Emerald City should have been in Colombia. But um, okay, so, uh, what else did I? Oh yeah, right. So the Orinoco is the the farmland or the ranch land. Interesting. And the Pacific's got all the water. It sounds like some very like he says very diverse. They said it's the second most diverse and the talked about was he talking about um oh i can't remember what the word was now but like i assumed it meant there's lots of different animals living there as well like lots of different like because of the very massive variety of climates in the different places there's a, a huge swathe of different wildlife that's what i thought he was talking about but i've caught what the freaking phrase for it now this place just opens up to the public and it's actually really hard to get here there's only like one cargo plane that drops you off in the general vicinity and then you have to drive a ways to get there challenge oh. accepted finally we reach the amazon region this area is without a doubt the most biologically compact region in all of colombia and a world apart from the rest of the country here lizards are blue dolphins are pink and people sometimes keep capybaras as pets no matter where you are in colombia all the people kind of share the same complex history and story such food will cover you i would keep a capybara as a pet i think no and they're a bit big capybara are a bit big actually but they are cute I mean, I could I could see the uh, I could see the attraction in having a pet capybara, but uh, I imagine they make a bit of a mess. <laughs> pink dolphins, I say, tick pink dolphins and blue lizards sounds like uh, sounds like sounds like fun. where they can tarnish their image with drug cartels yet entice you with Shakira. By the way, save yourself the trouble and do not bring up the cocaine conversation with Colombians. They've heard it all and they're sick of it. First off, <laughs> the country has about 50 million people and is the third most populous country
country in Latin America after Mexico and Brazil. It is also the third most populous country with Spanish speakers after Mexico and the U.S. In terms of ethnic makeup, it's really hard to kind of get an exact individual racial percentage because, like Brazil, a large portion of Colombia's population has a mixture of European and either Amerindian or African ancestry or both. It varies on region, but generally, mestizos and whites make up about 80% of the population, with the specific white population, mostly descended from Spain, being somewhere around 30%, but the line is a little hazy. Afro-Colombians, including the mixed-race black Colombians like the Raizal and Paraquero, make up about 12%. Indigenous tribal peoples make about 4%, and the rest of the population is a mixture of every other people group, like Asians, Arabs, and even a surprising community of Romani. Now, here's the thing. Colombians okay. have a strong sense of regionalism. People on the Caribbean coast generally have a more vibrant party type of culture with numerous festivals throughout the entire year. The second largest carnival wow, that's is colorful. in Barranquilla. The Pacific coast is where most of the black community can be found, where one quarter of the entire population there has Afro-Colombian roots. The Andes is where all the business and government is processed with the largest cities. Also here you can find the famous Paisa accent that outsiders in the Latin American world typically affiliate Colombia with. Joanna from Fama does a great job explaining this. Colombia has a bunch of different accents, but the most intense one is I puede que yo soy paisa. It's as if Sean Connery spoke Spanish and was telling you a very sad story all of the time. Ay, no puede que yo imagínate tú. Es que me acabo de ganar la lotería. She's so great. Hey, Diego, come here. Can you can you do the paisa accent? I'll try. Um, Sus que papá. Oye, no, no. Oye, no, que par. <laughs> Then, of course, you have the farmers of the Orinoco region. And yeah, I didn't get any of that, not being a Spanish speaker. But, yeah, we did a video reaction to something before about the Spanish people, about the different languages and how it changes so much from region to region. Of course, accents are a thing as well. But, um, yeah, interesting. Um, so there's... Uh, pictures during the uh, talking about the festivals and the possessions and that that very colorful wasn't they and some interesting uh like models and stuff well there's massive like it was like a massive footballer because <laughs> i do like their football in, in colombia as well i know that much they used to have that uh crazy goalkeeper with the big hair didn't they i can't remember what his name was now but uh anyway cracking on and the least populated amazon region that has the highest concentration of indigenous tribal peoples most of which speak their own languages and many of which to this day are still undocumented overall wow. there are all different types of colombians you have blonde hair blue-eyed colombians you have black african colombians lebanese colombians and everything in between now here's where things are going to get a little messy if you're going to understand one thing about colombia it's that pretty much everybody in the country is either somehow affiliated with or affected by one of the conflicting political groups that stem back over half a century ago even though colombia is doing exponentially better than what it was decades ago with a booming economy and relative government stability Kind of. Everybody knows that, yes, Colombia has had some pretty crazy times, and things got really messy, especially in the 80s and 90s, when oh. the whole country went pretty much through Armageddon. Ooh. I'm going to try to condense this in the quickest way I possibly can, but essentially, it all started with the liberal and conservative parties fighting against each other until all hell broke loose, and then this guy was assassinated in the 40s, inciting a 10-year civil war, which ended with each side agreeing to give consecutive ruling power between each side, alternating each four years. But then the people were like, no, we don't like that, so they created their own left-wing guerrilla warfare groups like FARC, M19, ELN, inspired by Che Guevara and the Marxist ideologies whom fought against the government and a few incidents against themselves sometimes, whereas parts of the Colombian army broke off and created their own illegal paramilitary groups that fought against both the regular military and the guerrillas. As all of this was happening, drug cartels were growing and expanding their billion dollar empires in the 80s and 90s, the largest ones being the Cali cartel led by the Rodriguez Orihuela family and the Medellin cartel led by Pablo Escobar, the richest drug cartel of all time. Side plug, watch the show Narcos. I've heard it's actually surprisingly kind of accurate. The cartels were so powerful they actually kind of technically ruled parts of the country and they fought against each other and the paramilitary and the government and the guerrilla warfare groups and all while this was happening the biggest casualty of the entire conflict was the everyday colombian citizen that didn't want anything to do with anything yeah Did I get that right diego yeah. okay yeah you tell me right. yeah yeah thanks so it all didn't really cool down until about the early 2000s after a huge effort from the U.S. that aided the fight against the cartels, which are pretty much all. Wow, that was that was some dark and blinking trouble in history there. Like everyone breaking off into factions and fighting each other and the crime took over in areas as well. It's like, yeah, definitely had some dark times. So hopefully everything is uh, in, on the up there now. It says that they are a lot better than they were. I suppose you couldn't get much worse than what it sounds like they were in them days. And it was that, did they, there's still people hiding out, they said, didn't they? There are still people hiding out in in that very uh, empty part of the country. Uh, was it the 54% that wasn't occupied? We had 54% of 3% of the population, something like that. And they said that's where some of the, the old, like, 
uh, um, guerrilla groups were hanging out, still living out there. So they've not gone away completely, but hopefully that stuff will fizzle out and uh, the actual Colombian citizens can get back to being, you know, just living their lives in relative peace, you know, and prosperity as much as possible without, you know, getting involved in battles for uh, government and, yeah. But that, it seems, I mean, it's like every country in the world has got that sort of history. It's just the human nature, isn't it? This human nature of people fighting against each other and wanting to have their own way and, and then, you know, discussions break down and it turns to blinking violence. It's just the way of the way of things, unfortunately. I don't think we're ever going to have a nirvana on Earth, unfortunately, because we're all too selfish and we're all too self-obsessed and we're all too... I don't know, tribal in our mindset still. All but non-existent today. Peace talks are still underway right now, and the country is seeing the brightest days it's seen in a long time. And of course, you can't feel bright without... Now, Colombians may have had some internal drama, but they've never really been diplomatically isolated. Historically speaking, Colombia has always been quite the extrovert, even in times of full-blown warfare. First of all, one thing you have to understand about Colombia is the Ecove Alliance, a term I literally just made up for this episode, referring to Ecuador, Colombia, and Venezuela. These three countries, in addition to Panama and bits of Peru and Brazil and Guyana, were all parts of the same country, once called Gran Colombia. Long story short, regions divided, and now you have three siblings, Ecuador, Colombia, and Venezuela. As you can tell, these three countries have similar flags and culturally identify with each other closer than any other Latin American country. Ecuador is kind of seen as like the little brother who got a job, stays out of trouble, and manages his business portfolio while sipping on some morocho on his beachfront home. Now, Colombia and Venezuela are kind of like fraternal twins. Colombia is like the stressed out brother who just got back from fighting in a war, and Venezuela is like the edgy yet attractive punk rock sister who doesn't like to be told what to do. They compete a lot and have minor squabbles here and there. I mean, Venezuela just kind of recently closed off the border. But in the end, they're all still family, even if it is a little dysfunctional. As mentioned before, Chile is a close friend. Colombians love either visiting or moving to Chile, and business has never been better between the two. Panama is kind of seen as like the little sister that sort of had a crush on the U.S. and decided to leave the family for him. But that's okay, because Colombia kind of sees the U.S. as a condonable suitor for her as he helps Colombia fight against the cartels and effectively re-revolutionize the entire economic infrastructure. Nonetheless, Colombia would probably consider Mexico their best friend. Not only okay. are they part of the Pacific Alliance, but they both love to piggyback off of each other's cultures. Mexicans like to take cumbia, and the Colombians like to take ranchera. In conclusion, Colombia is like that really attractive guy who just got out of a tornado and is just starting to wipe off the mud from his face and comb his hair. Oh, and Steve Harvey, you might want to avoid coming here for the next few forever. Stay tuned. Tomorrow is coming up next. Hey, John and Peach, I just want to give another quick shout out and thank you to 24HourAnswers.com. They are our first sponsor, and this video was sponsored by them. They are a great homework health and tutoring website. Most of the people on their website have at least masters okay. degrees, and the website. Yeah, I'm just, I'm sorry, I got distracted then. I think I heard a phone ringing somewhere that completely put me off. Okay, so that was uh, that was Columbia. So they're a lot better off than they were. That's the good thing. That's the that's the main takeaway. They had some very dark days, some very troubling times, but now things are getting much, much better than they had been previously. That's always good. Um, very diverse country, the five different regions with the different uh, climates and uh, conditions. Um, what is it? Fairly, a fairly, uh, yeah, I can't remember what the mix of uh, races were now. It was a fair, fair mixture of uh, of uh, people's there wasn't there um, yeah can't think of anything else to, to be think about that one now completely forgotten half the stuff that was said but there's still some gorillas hanging out in the in the in the uh, the Amazon area so wasn't the area the Caribbean area there was a Pacific area there was a was there an Atlantic area was, oh, I can't remember now seriously I, don't, <laughs> I, I watch this stuff but it doesn't all sink in we, we all know that but yeah that was that was interesting that was interesting Find, I'll find out a little bit more about Colombia, but don't ask me to quote any of it because uh, oh, don't don't say don't spell it with a U. That's another thing to remember. It's Colombia, not Colombia. That's there you go. That's that's pretty much. Uh, I think that's pretty much all I need to know. <laughs> I don't mention drugs to uh, them because they, they've all heard it before and uh, they don't need to hear it anymore. Thank you very much. But anyway, that's that for this reaction. 
And next up is Ecuador. I'm going to comment on, uh, have a look at the Ecuador uh, video sometime in the future. If you want to see that, then uh, please give me a sub. And let me have your reactions to my reaction. If you're from Colombia, you've got anything you want to say that I missed or anything, you know, just interesting stories, any interesting stuff to say about Colombia, then by all means, uh, put it down in the comments down below. And don't forget to give me the old thumbs up. Ooh, because we all love to have a thumbs up now, don't we? Anyway, I'm off. Till next time. Cheers for watching.